During today's episode, we're gonna give you 10 tips to improve your landscape photography. And to do so, I'm gonna bring in YouTubers Nick Page and Thomas Heaton to give us the tips. Plus, I'll give you one of my own. Let's get started. Hello, welcome to this video on Photography TV. We're here to educate, entertain, and inspire you around photography. Now, as I mentioned, during this video, we're gonna have 10 tips to improve your landscape photography. Now, I pulled these tips from the full interview with both Nick and Thomas, so if you wanna check out either one of those interviews, check the card, I don't know what side it's on, the little I button, uh, to check out the full interviews. But let's go right into the tips. Well, the, the very first thing, and the thing that people screw up the most is they just don't get out and do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> landscape photography, exactly. You, landscape photography is only as good as the place you're at. Yeah. And so many people, they just don't dedicate the time to go out and, you know, take that road trip to whatever local icon they have, and they don't take the time to go out and do it. So number one is you have to be there. That's good. <laughs> you, got, you got to play to win. Get off and the couch. So, exactly. And so that that's tip one for sure. Love tip it. two is to be there when the light is good or interesting or different. And it doesn't have to be the big dramatic epic sunset, which, but it doesn't hurt. But there's, you know, anything that is different than the norm. You know, the reason that those middle of the day photos that everybody, you know, posts on Facebook from their cell phone, the reason that those are not good is because they're just so normal. Yeah. They're the type of light that we see all day long. But the, the type of light, the more rare a type, particular type of light is, the more special it is and the better the photo is. So like sun, sunrise, sunset, they're very fleeting. They only happen twice a day and they only happen for a little bit. Those are good. But when you get like dramatic storms rolling through, say you get some big thunderheads rolling through, that doesn't happen very often. Yeah. And therefore, when somebody looks at the photo, they're like, oh, that's special. That's great. That's cool. You, or, you know, dappled light. When you get light streaming through clouds and, and creating interesting patterns on the on whatever you have there, anything that's interesting and different than normal, yeah. that's going to be the type of light that you want to shoot in. So shooting in good light is a big thing. Um, another thing is you want to keep in mind what time of year you're shooting things. So like I live in the Pacific Northwest and there's like um, kind of everything is seasonal here, you know. In the springtime, we have wildflowers. And then after the wildflowers die, then we have, you know, whatever. Right. So thinking seasonally and thinking about what is the most photogenic in the particular season you're in. Like if you're in the middle of the winter and, you know, you have all this dreary weather and stuff, it's not the best time to go take, you know, some valley shot. You want to, like, focus on what's different about that season. Yeah. So there's something, there's something called seasonal indicators. So seasonal indicators are like in the fall, you have fall foliage. So, you yeah, know, all the totally. photographers flock out to uh, whatever, you know, Smoky Mountains or whatever and photograph all that fall foliage because that's a seasonal indicator. So when somebody looks at the photo, they can tell what season that was taken in. Mm -hmm. If we're talking about spring, we're talking about new green growth of some kind. Maybe we're talking about um, rivers at high flow. Uh, we have waterfalls in my area, so springtime is like the time to go photograph the, the all the waterfalls while they have water in them. Because yeah. in the middle of the summer, they start looking sad, and like <laughs> half of the waterfall has water going over it, other half doesn't. Um, so whatever season you're in, even if this is just like a family road trip, think about what's going to be the photogenic for your time of season. And so thinking seasonally is another big thing for successful landscape photos. Love it. So with post-processing, uh, one of the biggest mistakes that I see people do, especially when they, they learn Lightroom, right? And they learn, you know, when you have a landscape photo, you bring down the highlights and boost the shadows. That's the first thing that all, all photographers start to do inside of Lightroom. And the problem with that is that by boosting your shadows or bringing down your highlights or taking your photos, your bracketed shots and running them through something like Photomatix and an HDR pl plugin. The problem with that is that it takes your photo and it flattens it and it kills all of the natural contrast that you had. 
And so like I've talked about how you need to draw the eye, you need to draw the eye with either your subject or with brightness and contrast. The eye is going to go to the brightest part of your photo. And if you take the brightest parts of your photo and darken them down, and then you take the darkest parts and brighten them up, the eye is just going to go everywhere because there's no contrast. There's no obvious, like, you know, bright spot in your photo. So rather than doing that, what you want to do is work locally. So I have yeah. a video on my YouTube channel called Working Locally in Photoshop. And what's nice about that is you can, like, for example, you can take the entire sky and just darken it down rather than bringing down the highlights. And what that's going to do is it's going to maintain the natural contrast in that sky. So it's not only going to look natural, but it's also going to be kind of punchy and contrasty like it was in real life. So you darken down your entire sky. And then you take your entire foreground or whatever and you just bring up the exposure a little bit. Mm. That way you're still maintaining that natural contrast and then you blend the two together. And so you're maintaining your contrast, but you're dealing with that high dynamic range scene and that's called exposure blending. I, I could go on and on. Yeah. Exposure blending is really a powerful tool for creating uh, photos that look realistic and natural but you're dealing with that that dynamic range a whole lot better than just bringing down the highlights, boosting the shadows. Okay, so focus stacking uh, comes into play when it's difficult to get enough uh, depth of field to get everything for in your shot perfectly in focus from front to back. So I've got a couple of photos that I just posted from Death Valley where um, I was sh- photographing these mud cracks that were down yeah. in this mud. And... I literally got my lens about this far from the ground and I was shooting vertical. And by the time I got this mud crack in focus, my background would be very soft, very out of focus. Or if I focused on the background, the foreground is very, very out of focus and soft and yucky. And normally like if you're going to try to do that in one shot, you'd have to do a couple things. You would have to bust out like your, your, oh, what is it? A hyperfocal distance calculator, <laughs> which is basically just nerd talk for uh, where to focus to get both the foreground and the background acceptably sharp. Right. Now, the, the key to that is the acceptably sharp. So it's not going to be perfectly sharp. It's going to be eh, pretty sharp. And so if you want to be really technical about it, what you do is you take a series of photos. So I'll get my composition set up. I'm working on a tripod. I can use something like F11, F16 to where I, my lens is still very sharp, but um, I have a little bit of depth of field. And then I'll take a shot where I focus on the background. I'll yeah. take another shot where I focus a little closer to the okay. camera, a little closer to the camera until I'm focused all the way to the, the closest Uh, point inside my frame so i'll open up those five photos or whatever i'll open them up as layers in photoshop and then i'll blend them all into one shot that way i have perfect sharpness from the very front to the very back as sharp as my lens is capable of Um, so there's something called diffraction and most people would say well why don't you just stop down to f22 take a shot and that should give you as much depth of field as you can well the problem is diffraction more nerd talk. <laughs> Diffraction is basically if you stop down too far, your lens is going to start to get soft. It's not going to be very sharp. So if you shoot at f11, right. that's going to be crazy sharp. If you shoot at f22, it's going to be like, mm, yeah, it's all right, I guess. You know, it's, yep. it's not going to be great for us, you know, photo photo extremists. So uh, that's what focus stacking is. F22 gets the depth of field and focus, but not the sharpness that you'd want. Exactly. And, and even and even then, like you, you're still dealing with the acceptably sharp. And that's just not, uh, I don't like the term acceptably sharp. <laughs> yeah. I, I want like Sharpest. tack sharp. Yeah, I want yeah. sharp. Right not just like, yeah, sharp. I have so many tips. Okay. Okay. Um, get a tripod. <laughs> need a tripod. Wake up early. Wake up earlier than you think you need to be up. Um, and stay out late. And just don't try too hard. Okay. Don't try and get everything in, which is what we all do. Um, we, we go to an amazing 
vista, huge mountain. And we go, wow, look at the sunrise. Look at that mountain. Wow. What you actually need to do is stop and just think for a second and say, okay, what, what is it? What is it that I love about this? What am I looking at? Is it the whole thing? Is it the way the light's falling off the mountain? Is it the reflection in the water? And what you can actually do is hone in and focus on smaller parts of the landscape, uh, which quite often could be much more effective than just going for a big picture where everything gets lost. Um, so yeah, don't try too hard. Uh, simple Simplicity is always the best. So if you're getting on your hands and knees and getting down low and trying to squeeze this in and get this in and make this work, it's probably not going to work. If you just walk up to a scene and you should just see it um, and it'll be simple and yeah, that will be the mo probably the most effective photograph. Uh, I, I always, well, most of the time use filters. They really help. I'm a, I'm a big fan of filters. Um, a lot of people would argue that you don't need them. Um, and it's true, you don't. But for example, I'm, I always, or most of the time, use a polarizing filter, okay. which um, which reduces glare and reflection, and it makes the image more contrasting, more, satur more saturated. Um, and it gives the image a look, a certain look that you can't achieve any other way. And that's because if you have a reflective surface in your image, such as wet rocks or um, there's haze in the atmosphere, um, it gets rid of all of that. Um, it polarizes the light. So your image just, it looks richer um, and is much better. The tip that I'm going to give you is my favorite as it relates to landscape photography, which is when you set up your shot, remember to try to create depth in the scene. Let me show you what I mean. So look at this first photo. This is at Yosemite National Park. This is a very flat and boring photo. It's flat because there's just no depth to the scene. You have no perspective of how big the mountains are or anything like that. But take a look what happens when you create depth by using perspective and actually adding something into the foreground. So look at the improvement in this shot compared to that prior shot. And so you can see the reason for that, it's almost the exact same you know, place that I was standing, the exact same camera angle. The difference is there is depth in this second shot and there's perspective to really show you how big things are. And so that's the tip, create depth. You can do that by adding different elements into the foreground, whether it's people, like that shot that I just showed you, or even bringing in elements of the landscape into the foreground, just to show the different size and perspective by creating depth. All right, so there you have it. We've given you landscape tips to improve your photography. Thank you to Nick Page. Thank you to Thomas Heaton for taking time out to talk with us and give us those tips. Again, reminder, check out their full interviews if you wanna see more, and please, Subscribe to us here on YouTube, and why don't you leave some comments of what are your favorite landscape photography tips? Help us out, give us some thoughts. Four of the tips are gonna come from Thomas Heaton, and that one more for me, that's 11, that's not 10, stand by. And inspire you, I should actually turn my mic on. Hold on. I forgot.